Good morning, folks. The sun continues to rest up. We've got another barrage of articles to share today, and we utterly simplify precipitation flows in the wind map shots to close. But let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com and find that very calm last 24 hours on our star. Solar flaring remains flatlined as even the bright areas are lacking potent sunspots beneath them. Apart from the coronal hole on the north, the primary things we're watching are plasma filaments and whether they are able to remain stable. We continue to see the higher population incoming on the north, but they have been fading or staying silent as they turn through. Solar wind is dropping out of all intensity, and with that, the KP index is dropping too. We are entering that territory where cosmic ray health alerts might be expected. The next intensification of the solar wind is about 24 to 48 hours away when the stream from that coronal hole arrives. Connections appear to be across the South Asia candy cane with the IMF, especially considering the intensified storm from last week's minor geomagnetism just struck Vietnam. It was the strongest storm to hit southern Vietnam in a little over a decade. Hundreds of homes destroyed, at least 27 dead. Folks, you may remember that a small asteroid was set to buzz our planet back on October 12th. We had made this video a month earlier showing the orbital diagram and what the show will look like from the surface of that asteroid as it passed by. Well, indeed, their tracking mission went off without a hitch. They aimed to go next level on close approach analysis, and you can learn about their success in the link below. Also got a link to the next Mars rover plans. We should really rename this thing Spider with all the eyes he's going to get. Up next is a commentary paper asking if DST, the magnetic field deviation, is a good measure of solar storms. And indeed, that's a very fair question. We know that solar flares don't budge the DST much. Look at last month's super solar storms on sunspot and radio flux data, barely a tick upwards. Well, one might suggest that something in the realm of magnetic ground perturbations or the ground electric field amplitude is being the best gauge since they wildly vary over even regional settings and are indicative of precisely the effects present in our system environments. That bit about high variability within a region is elucidated in another new paper about the Pacific Northwest. Apparently, the subsurface magnetism of Earth plays as big of a role as the high latitude induced currents there where up to one half of the entire ground effect can come quickly in as little as a minute, which increases the arc and damage potential in a significant way. Another thing about solar storms is their effect on the atmospheric modes and cells. The Hadley cells are responsible for snowfall everywhere, not just in China, not to mention a lot of other things that we call weather. And when it comes to detail about solar forcing, over half of the studies either indirectly suggest or directly peg the Hadley cell effects of solar storms as being the primary short-term forcing pathway as opposed to the longer-term top-down forcing from the stratosphere. Website members. Deeper look out last night on an ancient ocean of Ceres. Not only are there cryovolcanoes on the dwarf planet, but the entire subsurface layer is a softer, partially liquid layer with clathrate crystal water cages making up the harder portions. It's an incredible discovery. Folks, time is running short to book your tickets to Observing the Frontier 2018. I would love to shake your hand in the desert at the Awake event of the year. Student session includes professors, researchers, and national science champion Ferris Wald. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got the wind maps and shots of our star to close, including a reverse rainfall run. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.